Well, shalom, shalom. Hello, brothers and sisters from from Duarte, California. We 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 give you thanks and praise that you're watching, but it's all for the Lord and for His purpose. Uh, uh, we, we're here to give you good news, the good news that there's a better life out there, and that through Jesus, things happen, and they will be better for us. Okay, uh, we have a, a visitor here. His name is Roberto. He's also a cousin, Roberto Montejano, and uh, he's also a minister, and he's going to give us a little insight into search and to see and to look, to ask the question, who are we? Who am I? And uh, we'll get into that topic. And, but we're going to say a prayer. Let's see, um, a prayer for all those out there who are in need, who are in distress, who are in hunger. Uh, I'll let me begin. Or do you, want, do you want to say the prayer? Go ahead, brother. Okay, I'll say the prayer. Okay. Heavenly Father, we, we come to glorify or to, to acknowledge that, that you are life and that, that, that in you, mm. Lord God, happiness is. And Lord, yes, Lord, we seek you, Father. Open the yes. hearts yes. and the minds of those listening out there, Father, yes, Lord. That, that they don't know who they are. Yes. What, what are we? Praise God. Uh, give them understanding, Father. Yes, Lord. Open that door. City give them Baba that dream, Baba. that vision, Baba. that hope, Baba. the spirit of life, Baba. Lord. Enter into them Baba. now and, and give them that direction. Mm. Draw them towards you. Baba. Oh, holy Lord. Beautiful yes. you are. Thank Jesus. you, Lord Jesus, for this time and this moment. Yes. Talk to us in the name yes, of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise okay, Baba. Roberto. Here's the topic. Who are we? Who are we? Praise God. You know, um, I believe that today this world is suffering, um, Primo, from uh, a lack of identity. We have an identity crisis where we don't know who we are. And because we don't know who we are, speaking of our true nature, the way we were created, we don't know who we are, so um, we take identities that this world has, has placed on us, that has bestowed us. And, and this aden identity um, reflects who we are. So if you were born um, in, in royalty, well, you're, you're going to conduct yourself a certain way. You're going to behave a certain way. You're going to have certain authority, power, um, and all the things that come with that. But what about those who are born outside of royalty? What about those who are born in poverty? What about those who are going through many situations that a lot of us can't even imagine? For example, we hear in the news here in the United States about the things that are going on around the world. And today I want to talk to those people who maybe are sitting around a campfire uh, they probably have no water, no food. Maybe they lost loved ones. Uh, maybe they're, they're wounded. And the last thing they want to hear about is God. Because they believe that what kind of God rules this world who allows these things to happen? So the last thing they want to do is hear about Jesus, hear about God. Because to them, God doesn't exist. And if he does exist, hallelujah, what, what they believe about God is... Well, it's, it's not what we're supposed to believe. So I want to read scripture, first of all, to bring light to who, who, who am I? Who, really, who am I? And what's my purpose in life? So, Brother Robert, this, this is like for people who are confused, who are lost, who are in distress, who need help in in. in and finding what life is. Yes. Correct? Yes. Okay, well, let's get into it. Okay. I would like uh, to go to, um, I got these notes. This is not prepared from last month or last year. or No, this was given to me by the Lord just a few hours ago because I was praying and I was searching in my spirit. What am I going to say? It's not easy to come before you. And, and to talk to you. Um, but 
that's why we prayed and let the Holy Spirit take our place. And, and that's what we're going to do. So, Th Thessalonians 5.23. And I'll let my cousin uh, read it. And, and, and it's a very interesting uh, um, verse. Because in this scripture, it's going to tell us a clue of who and what we really are. How we are designed. Amen? Okay, 1 Thessalonians. 5.23. 5.23. Okay, here we go. Okay. I'll read this for now. Okay, Lord. Uh, now, may the Lord of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may, you, may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Spirit, soul, and body. Amen. You know, um, there's not, I believe, there's not very much talk about this in church today as to who we are. But here it says, may the Lord sanctify you. In my version, it uses the word holy. It means all of you. And then it mentions your soul, your body, and your spirit. Wow. So we are made of three different parts. But you see, this here is written after Adam and Eve. So I want to turn the clock back and go to the, to the creation of the first man. Amen? And that we're going to find out and I'm going to give a small illustration right here. And then we're going to go into Scripture a little bit. It's important to have Scripture to understand that it's not because I say it, but it's because of the Bible. So here it talked about a body. That we are a body. It talked about a spirit. That spirit is in the body. See? The spirit. And it talked about a soul. Here's a soul. So these three things, these three things, the body, the spirit, and the soul, is us. That's me. I'm composed of three different things. So now, basically, the body is the outer flesh. And the Bible says that this body, when we die, death means separation. The physical separation of the human being is his body goes back to the earth. We're going to read that. The spirit of life that God blew into Adam and it said he was a living being, it goes back to the Lord. But what happens to the soul? Okay? And now, we're going to go back and we're going to read. And we're going to look at Adam before he sinned. And that's in, if my cousin can read, Genesis 2-7. Okay. Genesis 2-7. Okay. Here we go, brothers and sisters. And, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breath into his nostrils, the breath of life. Wow. Man became a living being. Okay. That word being is also used as soul. Now, there's a little confusion because sometimes the word spirit means the soul. Because the soul sometimes is represented by the body. So it's a little confusing. But today, we're going to break it down so that you understand why are the things happening around me? If there is a God and He is merciful and He is all loving, then why are these things happening around the world? And we're going to find out that God is the designer of life, not the designer of death. Death, hallelujah, is a byproduct of sin. As a matter of fact, we're going to read later on the scripture where it says that the wages of of sin is death. But what, what did the Lord mean here by 
He made man out of Adamos is a name of a clay. That's why they call him Adam. So out of earth, we are made out of clay. That clay dries up and it turns into dust. And that's what it says that we are going to return. But it also mentions there that he breathed the breath of life. That breath of life is the spirit. Okay? That spirit, the man was made out of clay and he, and he laid there, but now he had to become alive. Now there's a soul in there that we can't see. The body goes around the soul. Now, the spirit of life comes in, and there you go, man. But there's one thing that Adam had that we no longer have. It's called the Holy Spirit. Not to be confused with the spirit of of life. Everything that's living has the spirit of life. The animals, the trees, the plant, any organism that's living, that multiplies, that's physically active, has the spirit of life. Because that's who sustains life, God, through that spirit. But the Holy Spirit is God himself. And Adam, he was perfect. And so was Eve. And they had the Holy Spirit. Now, when they had this Holy Spirit, they had a glorified body. When we read that Jesus walked on the water, when Jesus rebuked the winds, and the sea was calm after he ordered them, and, and the winds obeyed him, and, and when he healed the sick, and he made the blind see, and he made the lame walk, we see that the physical uh, forces of life in this world do not hold him down. They have no effect over him. As a matter of fact, he has control. So he has a supernatural mind, a supernatural body, and guess what? Adam and Eve have the same thing. I know this is going to sound crazy, and this is not the study, but just imagine, how did Adam name the eel that lives under a rock, under the ocean? God says, the word says that he named all the animals. So he had to see them and observe them in order to name them. How did he know that that eel lived Call me crazy, but I believe in his complete state. He can walk under the water. He can walk on top of the water. There was no limits, no boundaries. God created a perfect being to rule over all earthly creations. Okay. What happened? When you read, that's why it's important to go to church. It's important to read the book of life. It is important to, to listen to the God's servants who are not afraid to speak the truth because the truth will set you free, free of those chains that are, that are, uh, that twist our mind and makes us sin against God because we are mad at God because why did my son die? Why did my wife die? Why are we starving? Why are we cold? If you exist, if you're for real, why, 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 why? What kind of God do we serve? Don't talk to me about that. They always blame God. Huh? Yes. Every time there's trouble, there's, there's sickness, and they, and they say, what did I do wrong? Blame it on God. And I'm going to say we. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go as far as saying we. We're guilty of, you know? of the same. So if we who know God and know all the secrets, and well, I'll say a lot, not all, but we also blame God, just imagine the people that don't know all that. Imagine their mind. They could care less about God. They want to feed their kids. 
You know? So what happened? Real simple, because we don't have the time. When Eve sinned because she grabbed the forbidden fruit. It's in Genesis. You can read the story. Now, they try to put Adam, like, on the other side of the garden. Innocent. He was over there. No, no, no. Let me tell you something. The Bible says that she took from the fruit and tasted it and then gave to her husband. He was there. He was there. How can you give something to somebody if it's not? It didn't say, and she walked across the brook, across the hill, and, and she found Adam on the other side. No, no, no. It says she ate and she gave to her. So he was there. Okay, here's a little twist, a little twist on that, maybe just, just so you can think about. Could it happen that when she took a bite and he saw her and he said, you committed it, this is wrong, and he knew that she was going to perish, that maybe out of his own, he says, I want, I want to perish with you. Give me some. Huh? That's Different, just, just you know, we're, we're talking about because we're married. <laughs> and, you know, we got grandchildren. I do, you know, and, and his kids are grown. But, and, and not to offend anybody, but, you know, uh, to those of you who are married, when, when your wife turns around and says, don't touch me, don't talk to me, oh, it kills us. Now, uh, yes, I, I, can, I, I, can, I can go <laughs> along with that, you know. And, and, and Adam, uh, when the wife says, no, don't touch me, then, you know, she got mad. Okay, honey. Okay, and you know, Adam uh, lost it right there. I, I believe that if he would have stood his ground, she would have been forgiven. And I believe that if he would have been humble, and he would have humbled himself and told the Lord, I have sinned. But he didn't say that. No. Yeah. He said, he, he wanted the to woman it. that you gave me. Yeah. See, he put it off on her. So God says, from now on, you find your own woman. If you find her, I will bless you. You pick your own woman. But a lot of times we're praying, find me a woman, Lord. Send me a woman. I already did that with Adam, and look what happened. You find your own, and I will bless you. I will let you know if she's the good one for you or not, but you got to go out and seek. There's a lot of things that we have to do on our own now, you know, because that's just the way it is. God doesn't want no puppets. God doesn't want no robots. God doesn't want no cowards. God wants men who are ready and willing to take responsibility for their actions and put their lives and their household at the feet of the Lord to do his will. So anyways, when Adam sinned, guess what happened? He was kicked out of the garden. That garden represents... The Holy of Holies, the place where God communicates person to person with, with man. And that is inside of us. Now, what happened? The Holy Spirit is gone. Separation. So now, man is left in a natural state. He's no longer... A divinity. He's no longer divine. He no longer has a glorified body. He can no longer walk on the water. He can no longer uh, um, perform miracles. Amen? So now, Satan managed to separate, to kill man. For the Lord says, the day that you sin, the day that you eat of that fruit, you will surely die. You will surely separate. Well, the first separation, we are dead because the Holy Spirit is not in us. Spiritually dead. Yeah. So now we're the walking dead. Because this body, yes, it has a soul. Okay, here's the soul inside, the real us. But now this body has the Spirit of God, but not the Holy Spirit. It has the breath of life. So now this body exists. Now, now we're the living dead? We're the living dead. <laughs> because we're living, but we're separated from God. Holy Spirit is left. It's over here, see? It's gone. Okay? So we're left here. And when we read what happens 
year after year, decade after decade, century after century, that man is only ruining this planet, ruining himself, and separating himself more and more from God. But because there is an emptiness, you see, when this left, when the Holy Spirit left, there's an emptiness in us. And we are searching, we are seeking. And we are lonely, we need companionship, we, we are afraid, so we need security. Um, and we need and we need and we need. And we look for it anywhere we can get it. And there's only two sources. There's only two sources. There's the source that comes from the spiritual world of the malignant one, which is Satan, the darkness. Okay? And there's the spirit of life, the spirit of light, which is the Lord. There's no other fountain. And we need, because this left, we need. And so we get, and Satan did something. Satan does not want the Holy Spirit in us because then he knows how awesome we are. So he replaced, and I should have got another cup, but let's pretend this cup, no, no, I'm going to use this. Okay. This is the spirit of religion. So the Holy Spirit left, and now Satan says, okay, okay, I know, you need God, you need God, okay, religion. There. Now you believe in God and, and you do this and you do that and you're not worthy and blah, blah, blah. And you live with religion, which doesn't help you at all. And it comes in many shapes and forms. Would, would, excuse me for a second. Would you say religion is uh, rules and regulations? Religion is rules and regulations invented by man to subsidize the void of the Holy Spirit. So they replace it. Well, if you do this, if you do that, if you, if, you know, and, and they invented all kinds of prophets, all kinds of gods, all kinds of things, and put it in here, put it in here, and when it doesn't work, we say, you know what? I don't need this. I don't believe. But we think that this is this. And we say, we don't need God. We don't need the Spirit. Wait a minute. You never had it. You have no idea what it's like. What you had was this, lies and hypocrisy from Satan himself using people who claim to be men of God who mislead you. And when war comes, when, when poverty comes, when sickness comes, when, when, when things happen in our life, this religion just doesn't, doesn't measure up to the needs that we have. So we say, the heck with this. And what's left? A em living, empty body. Whew. You know, it's really difficult because I see the time and we're running out of time. But I'm going to tell you something. The Bible can prove you can go to Ecclesiastes, you can go to Corinthians, you can go to so many scriptures that show us about the body, the soul, and the spirit. I just want to talk a little bit about the soul, okay? Who is the soul? The soul is the real me. And I was telling my cousin at home, I said, look, cousin, okay, let's take me. I'm here. And let's say I'm outside in the street and I get run over by a car and they chop off my legs. So now I'm sitting down. You see me here sitting down, right? Praise God. I have no legs. Now, is this still Robert? Am I still me? The answer is yes. But what about in the refrigerator over there in the hospital? They have my two legs. They're waiting to dispose them. Is that me? No. No. Those are the legs that I used to have. So those legs is not the real me. So who is the real me? 
And let's say that I'm living and I'm in a little wheelchair and I want to go to the 7-Eleven to buy, a, uh, I don't know, a, a smoothie or something. And I get hit by another car. And this time I lose both arms. Now, here I am. No arms, no legs. Is it still me? The answer is yes. This is Robert with no legs, with no arms. And they put my arms in the freezer with my legs. Now, is that arms in that freezer and that legs in the freezer, is that me in the freezer? No, I'm here. The legs and the arms that used to belong to me are over there. But they can burn them, they can do whatever they want with them, but I'm still here. So who is the real me? Let's take it one step further. Let's say that science has evolved and I got into an accident and I have my head. But they put tubes and oxygen and blood flowing through my brain and now all I have, well, I know I can't cover everything, but let's say from here, this is me, this is all I have. And you come and you see me on a table, okay, you see me on a table, and I go, hey, hi, how you doing, you know? And my body is over there somewhere with my legs and my arm. Is that body me? No. But is this me if I was still alive? And you come and say, poor Robert, look, he only has a head, he can't go nowhere, he can't move, he can't... But, but he can see and he can, so is this me? So who is the real me? See? The real me is the soul. And in another occasion, we can have a study about the soul. But this is the real me. But the soul needs a body. So that it can use the body to move, to see, to, to think, to, to talk. Okay, so the soul needs a body. But if the soul goes in a body that's only dust, it can't do nothing. So the body needs a spirit, the spirit of God. So the body has the spirit of God, the body's alive, and we occupy the body. Now the problem is that the soul does not have God. The soul is absent, it's empty, it's void. And this is the real me, the real you. This is not the real you. This is the real you. And you need the Holy Spirit in order to live the life that God wants you to live. When you claim the Holy Spirit and it comes into you, you are now, like it says in Romans, in Romans chapter 6, 1 through 14, read it. It talks about a new creation. It talks about a new creation and that sin has no more authority over us. And it says that those who were baptized in, 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 in Jesus were baptized unto his death. And if he was resurrected, then we are going to be resurrected. And someday this body we're not going to have anymore. But we're going to have a new body. A new body that includes Perfection, like Adam had it in the beginning. But now, the new glorified body, we're going to be with the Lord. But until then, until then, we are in this body, we are in this world, and we need the Holy Spirit because now, inside this body that is meaningless, is me, my soul, but now the Holy Spirit. So now, I am restored to my original state, which means I can talk to God, God can talk to me, and I can do supernatural acts like healing the sick, like making a difference in your life by the words that come out of me because they're coming out by the Holy Spirit with anointing, with power to set you free, hallelujah. And you can be exactly like me once you accept the Lord, once you get baptized, once you turn your life and give it to the Lord, hallelujah, and He comes in you and now you are restored. Now you are in His image, in His likeness. Brother, I, that, that's hard. <laughs> that's hard. It's, it's, for a lot of people, the teaching or the understanding is hard. And, and they, uh, 
they wonder, how could we do this? How does it take, we need to have first to believe, to trust, to faith. Faith comes first, huh? Because if, if they don't take a step of faith to begin to say, hey, is this true? Is this real? Can this spirit of the living God come inside me and change my world, change my heart, my mind, my soul? They have to take that step yes. of faith, huh? Correct? You know, one of the first steps that we can take, and I'm talking to those of you who are really having a hard time. My heart goes out to you. But there's a purpose. A man without purpose is like a leaf blown in the wind. But you have purpose in life right there where you're at. Right now, you are chosen specially by God because he, he wants to restore you. Because through your testimony, you're going to help those around you. And just because you're in that position right now doesn't mean you're going to stay there forever and ever. God's people, we travel the world. We travel the globe. It doesn't matter where we're at. Today, we're sleeping in the in the royal palace, tomorrow we're sleeping in, in the wilderness, under a bridge. Who knows? It doesn't matter where we're at. What matters is that we have the understanding that once we acquire the Holy Spirit, we're there because God has somebody that needs us to talk to them about what we have learned, what we have done, and why do we act different? Why do we live different? Why do we perceive life as different? Why is it that it doesn't bother us what's going on around us? Because we know that there is a better life coming ahead. The first step that we can do, very simple. We're going to say a prayer. And I'm going to tell you something. If you think that by saying this prayer and repeating it, just because I ask you to repeat it, you might as well not do it. If you think that all you got to do is pray and that's it, you might as well not do it. But if you want to know who the Holy Spirit is, if you want to be whole, if you want to get to know the Creator, it doesn't matter how you call Him. It doesn't matter what religion you have. It's okay. We're not going to go there. We're going to ask the Lord to come into our lives and from this moment on to talk to us, to enlighten us. So in Jesus' name, if you want to know who God is, if you want the answers to why are all the things happening around you and what it is you can do about it, if you're thinking of taking your life or even taking the life of your kids because you don't want them to suffer anymore, Let's say this prayer and let the Lord begin to work in your life and you're going to see, I declare in the name of Jesus that in less than 24 hours, you're going to see a change in your life. In Jesus' name, we pray right now. Okay. Okay. Give, me, give, me a little, mm. give me a little word in before, I guess, before we, 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 we make this prayer. Mm. Um, people listening, brothers and sisters out there, we just, I ask, take a chance. Open your heart. See if this living God is for real. And he, he will answer you through maybe through a dream, through, through, through your thoughts, through your heart pounding right now. He's there right there. The spirit of the living God is right there with you. We need to let him inside of us. And this is what Brother Robert's going to do. He's going to help you and guide you but eventually, it's you. It's your decision. Take that chance to know this living God through Jesus. It's through Jesus. It's the only way. He, he, is, he is the way the life, and the life. Okay, Robert. Go ahead through. Get plenty of time. <sighs> Praise God. Heavenly Father, I just ask you, Lord, right now, Yes, Father. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. I just ask you to, to come forth, Lord. Every single man, woman, and child, old, young, ah, right now, regardless of color, creed, race, regardless of circumstances, regardless of their, of their status socially, regardless of their economical 
status. Lord, I ask you to come before them. All those right now who have their eyes closed, who have their hands raised, Jesus, in your sweet name, I put them in your hand to enlighten them, to give them wisdom. And I ask you to pray with me and to say, God, Lord, I don't know if I should say Jesus or not. They say it's through Jesus, through Jesus, but they told me that Jesus was just a prophet. I got another God. But you know, there's so much confusion that right now it doesn't matter. All I know is that there's a creator, and, and, it, it, and I want to know why these things are happening to me. I want to know why I don't know you. I, I, I need you to come into my life. I need you to give me clarity. I, I need you to take over my life. I want you in my life. I need you. I have questions, and I need answers. I want to stop suffering. I want my children to stop suffering. I don't know why. And, and you know, I don't like not liking you. I don't like blaming you. I don't like what I am. I don't like what's going on. So please, they say you resurrected. They say you came down and died. I don't know. How can I affirm something that I don't know? But if it's true, if all those things are true, if the ever-living God looked down at creation, if you looked down at me, and you decided to come down to, to, to die for me and to take my place, well, that's beyond, that, that's beyond what, what I can comprehend. But, but if that's the way it is, then, then okay. Show me. Come into my life. Okay, in Jesus' name, I pray. Heavenly Father, it doesn't matter if they know you or not. I know you, and I invoke the name above all names. Every single living being must bow down in heaven, on earth, beneath the earth, that you are the Lord. In Jesus' name, I place them in your hands. In Jesus' name, I ask you to come upon their lives, to enlighten them, to show him the way, the life, and the truth, which is you. Make it possible for one of your servants to go to them and to talk to them about this message. Who am I? In Jesus' name, I pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If you prayed this prayer with me, the Lord is going to come into your life. Be ready. Be willing to listen. And it's going to be like a bucket of cold water to a lot of you. It's okay. Embrace it. Don't be afraid. Up to now, nothing has been working. But now things are going to change. Thank you for the time. Okay, to, to, uh, to put it in perspective, to, to answer the question and to finalize it, who am I? What was the I answer? am the son of the ever-living God, and I walk with an open heaven, and I invoke his name, and wherever I go, I have purpose and destiny. I am full, I am complete, hallelujah. And you can only see what I see. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Ain't that beautiful? Yes. A change. And it's occurred to you. It's occurred to me. A change. Yes. Huh? And it has occurred to a lot of people that are exactly where you're at. And you are no different. Yes. So keep seeking, Lord. It takes a life of, of sanctification, seeking him, searching for him. And you find it in, in his word, yes. his glorious word. Hallelujah. So we're, we'll be closing up in, uh, and put your uh, prayers also for um, the Dexter family. They're on vacation right now. They're having a good time. And we're here to fill in. So they'll be back on, on the next, next week. Uh, if you have any questions and if you want to talk with uh, 
uh, Dexter or, or, or Marisol, uh, sh shalom, shalom, uh, dot com. And uh, or if you have prayer requests, uh, send them in. Talk to them. They'll pray for you. And uh, any, any need, maybe a, a Bible or something, talk to them and, and things will happen. Things will Praise change. God. So give us your thoughts and your mind. So uh, it, we ask to bless you mm. in the name of Jesus. Yes. All for his glory. We honor him in the name of Jesus. Shalom, shalom. Shalom. Be strong, my brothers. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Oh, praise God. That was powerful. <laughs>